The novel coronavirus, COVID-19, has spread across the globe, devastating economies and causing panic buying. D-Herb CEO, A.D. Dolphin, recently sat down with Dr. Habib Sadeghi, founder of the Beehive of Healing, an integrative medical center in Agora Hills, California, that specializes in chronic illnesses such as cancer and autoimmune diseases. A.D. and Dr. Sadeghi discussed the COVID-19 outbreak, causes, possible solutions, and ways to help people maintain both physical and mental health during the lockdown. So the key is basically to boost our immune system. That's it. That's, that's the it. only thing. That's the only thing. That's it. The, the only thing that's going to prevent us, you, I can't just go and hide myself and never be in your presence or never make an appointment to come and see you because I might be late and you might get pissed. Right. What kind of relationship is that? Right. What I need to do is I need to develop a relationship between us that is based on brotherhood, honesty, re mutual respect, and kindness. And that creates buffering capacity, softness, so that if there is a shortcoming on your side or shortcoming on my side, we'll be able to work it out. Right. That's a robust immune system. Right. Right? Right. That's what people should really focus on. This idea of just lock up, the boogeyman is everywhere and anyone can give it to you and you're going to die, that's short-sighted, that's at best naive and reductionistic. So boosting your immune system. One of the things that you mentioned is vitamin C is great for you. Absolutely. Um, God, I definitely have to get that recipe for the lemon. For oh, the, sure. For the, Absolutely. Yeah, for that, because I definitely want to post that and, and share that with the D-Herbs community. That would be awesome. Um, okay, so that's the way we should. I love that. I love that. So it's definitely a natural approach yeah. to doing it. So when you try to do a vaccination, what you're saying is basically a vaccination is going to create a bigger issue in the future. It always has. You, you look at, um, and this is public knowledge, um, we had a medication called Vioxx. Oh, God. It, I mean, I remember, you know, going through internship and residency in New York, and Vioxx was like, we were like, they were pushing us to give Vioxx for headaches. Well, the company was, <laughs> the company was aware that Vioxx was causing heart attacks, and it was going to kill people. Mm -hmm. And they knew how many people they were gonna they were gonna kill, so Merck, mm. yeah, oh yeah, they they knew about that. So what they did was they included that in the factor that even if when they were to be sued, they were gonna be still ahead of the game. Wow. The federal government went after the pharmaceutical company, and they were like for the first time, all the CEOs of the of the company were like close. They could smell the gateway to jail. Their lead attorney got them off the hook. They were so grateful to the lead attorney that they made the lead attorney the CEO of the big pharma. Wow. And in the internal emails, it's all documented, in the internal emails, they referred to the, they needed a solution. So they needed something to help pay for Vioxx. They came up with the HPV vaccine, Gardasella. Wow. And we know now that this is one, this is, that's a recipe for disaster that not only it, it doesn't protect you, but it increases the chances of cervical cancers and various different things. That's crazy. It is so funny that you mentioned that. Um, someone told me a story about AZT. Mm. They said AZT, when it first came about, it was supposed to help cure cancer. Mm -hmm. And they realized after doing study after study, they realized that it was so damaging to your body, they wouldn't allow it on the market. But then when AIDS came mm. around, AZT apparently came back and they used it for that. I just I just don't understand the, the, the decision making process. If it's bad over here, why is it good now? How does this stuff keep coming on? Is it just money overwhelming the situation? Unfortunately, it seems like it. Unfortunately, it seems like money and power corrupts. Right. I think when you know, more, you know, when you look at the trickle down economy and the basis of your happiness is on material things. Right. You you have a bigger house, you have a better car, you have a jet, you do this instead of really. Well, have you taken the time to really develop your internal world? Right. What is your uh, psycho-spiritual pulse like? You know, do you have a value system? 
When you have a society that doesn't really honor that and everything is based on dollar sign, well, gosh, you know, the value system is lopsided. So, you, you know, the, the, the downstream effect of that is that you're going to have CEOs of the company. Isn't this amazing that you look at 2019, 2020? I mean, people can't. I mean, I, I want the community to look this up. Right. You look at the number of CEOs that they just resigned. From, yeah, no. They, they walked away with all these parachute, you know, it's just amazing. Right. So when you look at the, the one percent of the one percent, the elite, that they have such a level of influence and they have access to the information that has not bled through society and you and I don't have access to. Right. You know, we need to wake up and we need to be able to really use our mind and to be able to criticize. We, we got to be able to read through things and understand it. It's very simple to say, oh, gosh, you know, oh, why don't you know, you look at a pen, the pen or a piece of stick has two ends. Mm -hmm. If one thing is good here, What's the downstream effect? What right. comes with it? Right. So these are some of the questions that I think, you know, the community or really to really I encourage them to ask. And, you know, you, you are the master of your own domain. You're responsible for your own consciousness and what you put inside your body. Is there anything that we can do externally to help us protect us from 5G? I know five, a lot of phones are running on 5G. Mm -hmm. Are there things that we can do or encase our phone in? Is there, is there devices that we can put within our house to protect us from Absolutely. 5G? Yes, and I say this not from a place of um, ego, but from a place of humility. If, if there was a better book that I knew, I would encourage that and I would, you know, but my wife and I, we publish a, a, a magazine once a year. It's called Megazen. It literally takes us, you, you've read it. Right. It takes us nine months, and it's just incredibly, it's just rich with articles about 5G and technology and the way and vaccinations and our nonprofit um, organization, Love Button Global Movement, and so many other things. And this is a way that we want to be part of a larger conversation. There are many things that the minute that you actually ask yourself that, oh, wait a minute, this thing could actually may not be as safe as it's packaged to be. Right. Then you start reading. Right. Maybe, okay, you want to use it, great, and you work at home, fantastic. But maybe when you go to sleep, you could turn it off. Right. I mean, who's going to use the Wi-Fi when you're dreaming, <laughs> right? Okay, okay. So some of the very simple things that we could right. do, right? right. And, you know, and, and there are a lot of people that they may not have um, the research. Listen, people are really hurting. I mean, people are really hurting. I mean, I covered uh, one of the uh, uh, clinics um, downtown L.A., free clinics, and you look, some of the patients that I have, 12 people are living in a two-bedroom. Yeah. Six of them, you know, they were working daytime, and six of them were working at night. But right now, there is no work. Right. People are really hurting. So this idea, uh, even if you have a Wi-Fi or you're around Wi-Fi, if you could deactivate it at night when you go to sleep, if you could put it away, you know, away from um, the youngest ones, right? right. Our children, that they're so, uh, they're so just impressionable to these technologies that could really harm them, right? And you can see that all of these electrifications that Rudolf Steiner talked about, and he, he actually talked about that, listen, during the time that air was not swarming with all these electrification, it was a lot easier to be a human being. Right. And right now, it requires a significant spiritual practice. And whatever that spiritual practice is, it has nothing to do with religion. A spiritual practice is when you actually understand and you have a GPS system. You know where your north is, where your south is, mm -hmm. where is east, west, up, down. Right. right. And every day you remind yourself of who are you, why are you here, and you understand. For me, this is a university. It's called University of Life. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting here, and there's a camera crew. And we also got, you know, the rest of the 7.85 billion people here. And we all have registered you or an entrepreneur and you're focusing on this and the, the challenges that you have will be part of your curriculum. Right. I might be in this ministry, the challenges that will come up in me because my consciousness is developing in that direction. Right. All of us, we have certain challenges that we're working with. Now to have that depthful meaning in our lives, it just uplifts us. Right. And it brings us a lot closer.
Awesome.